Oh. Welcome to another episode of Two Ales and Hockey Tales with Wally. And today I am so excited to have on a 47 and 52 year olds from Lethbridge, Alberta and Bramley, Ontario, Canada. Their hockey journeys have taken them to Canada, the USA, Northern Ireland, Denmark, Italy, England, and they are legends in Germany and have their trickets or jerseys in the rafters. One of them so old, he was drafted by the Quebec Nordiques. <laughs> uh, number 19 is in the rafters in Beatingheim and number 24 in Straubing. Between them, we have 28 years of professional hockey. They returned to the shed after episode 72 and 269 have combined for 1,167 goals, plays, or listens. They are muck runners of the highest order. One put up way over a point a game in pretty well every single league he played in, except for the one season, the DL. The other vaulted Straubing to the DL by becoming a Deutsche Meister like yours truly, and then had his way with the DL and Straubing for another seven years before switching to the old honey hole, the EIHL, and promptly let everyone know what's up as they won it all. He was a first-team All-Star, D-Man of the Year, most goals by a D-Man, and shit, he had to be nearly 40 by then. The other fella is still winning, and just this past weekend won in golf this time. Welcome to the back deck, Kelvin Elfring and Craig Teeple. <laughs> thanks, Wally. Thanks, Wally. <laughs> hey, thanks for coming back, guys. I'm uh, trying to... Uh, win in germany i'm trying to have on all these german guys you know and try and get ranked high trying to win again you know been a long time yeah well we'll do our best the bar low with me and Elfie then <laughs> well i guess you guys are sold people don't know about those guys with the jerseys and the rafters eh by the way yeah. i get free beer again now checkmate <laughs> oh that same company or different gray matter in concord ontario folks we're local now really gray local matter. it sounds like a nice heavy ipa <laughs> It's a checkmate. This one here is, uh, well, it's like a Pilsner, I think, or a lager. Yeah. You know, I should probably know. It's good, though. Yeah, and it's free. Sounds, <laughs> sounds delicious. Yeah. So I get into how we know, know each other. Alfie, I haven't seen you since episode 72. You know, this is episode 320 now. <laughs> Time flies. I feel like I just did it yesterday, Wally. I know. It was fun, too. That's long. It was a while ago, though, hey. Eh? Yeah, it was. So you're still saving lives? Yeah, pretty much. Well, still in the uh, hip and knee replacement game. And kids are getting older. Daughter's senior now, and she's starting to look at universities. So that's uh, where we're at. The son's a sophomore, or as you say in Canada now, grade 10. And he's just doing baseball. we got a baseball tournament next weekend. So you're right into the baseball. It's amazing when you get older and you see all the different stages of life people are at, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're you're in the you're in the weeds right now. I am I am in one. We are mucking it up. I just got off the ice. I was just on the ice for two hours. I worked all day <laughs> and ripped out a pot on my lunch hour. <laughs> Sounds fun. <laughs> it, well, it's been a busy day. It's Monday though, folks. You gotta give her, right? <laughs> Deep's and, probably old enough to retire pretty soon, isn't he? No, I mean, I'm old enough, just not, yeah. not financially set enough. <laughs> <laughs> that could happen in the leagues we were playing in. <laughs> um, Teeps, I didn't know how we know each other. I was at a Ripley Wolves hockey match, and I get chatting with the fellow standing beside me, and he had played in Denmark against you or something. He says, do you know who Craig Teeple is? And this happened right after I had chatted with you in the shed. Oh, really? Who was that? I wish I remembered his name. I think he played in Voyance or it was in Denmark against you. And he was, he was, yeah, yeah. I don't know. He's in Ripley, Ontario one night. So he can't be from yeah, far yeah. away. Yeah. Yeah. No, small world. Um, yeah. Like Elfie said, it feels like we just did our pod. I know it was a lot longer. You had Elfie on way before me. Way before. I know. Yeah. I know where the priorities lie. I was like 200 yeah. or something, but. Um, well, I didn't yeah, know you. Like I didn't know you. Yeah, I didn't, didn't know. play against you, but Alfie, I did. And it seemed when I was in Cardiff and he was in Belfast, I played a lot of shifts against him. And he's the left D man and I'm the right winger. And um, I didn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy my time playing against him at all. Uh, I got a question. I got a question for you, Wally. Well, he doesn't stay him. back. He, I want to play wing so I don't have to do much in the D zone. And I want to save myself for offense. And that guy's just boogie around everywhere. It's horseshit. He was like, I used to, like, 
like we had the little chirp in our little group chat there about me not going in the corners and shit like that. Like, you know, right. and how he's healthy, saving like, lives, healthy, healthy <laughs> saving lives. And I'm just a chicken shit that doesn't go in the corner, but you'd practice. And I used to say, he's like, he's like a fucking, like a, a string of spaghetti. Cause his arms would be going, his legs would be going and you can't, you can't hit him. You can't fucking, he's just going every inch uh, uh, Horrible, uh, horrible looking skater. But he was speed fast. wobble. It was like speed wobble. Every, it, yeah, it, it, it was a controlled fast. speed wobble. 100%. And he could, that's why it was funny on that picture on the poster that he sent where he was getting filled. Oh. I don't think I ever seen him got hit. Get hit. Yeah, he got hit hard. Oh, got one. me. Lee Salter's got me pretty Is good. Is that who it was? He's a big fella. My former yeah. babysitter back in Cardiff. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a small yeah. world, eh? He was my line mate He's there. A big the rig too. He is a big fella. Handsome I fella, remember. too. Yeah, he is. He is a little bit of a man rocket. Oh, I, man. I when he would start fighting at center ice and the hair would come out, and my goodness, the people in the crowd couldn't contain themselves. <laughs> yeah. 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 He knew it, too, though, I think, because, you know, you get out there for the Welsh National Anthem and he'd – flick the hair back squirt the water you know it was it was wild <laughs> that's the craziest anthem i think i've ever heard you can't understand a word out of it too but it makes the hair stand up on the back of your neck doesn't it yeah no it was good i love any anthem that they play before a game yeah those were fun games there's a lot more did you not find there's a lot more mucking it up in the eihl than there was in germany oh yeah yeah way more mucking it up yeah teeps never had to had to Take his talents to that league. Uh, he was, did yeah, actually, it was, but it was, it was the was British that, was Super the British League. Super League when yeah, I was there. really. Jeez. Yeah, we had uh, when I played there. We had eighteen Canadians on our team. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> it was uh, two minute uh, double minor for a toe to toe fight. Just two minutes. So, so double minor, so four minutes. Oh, four minutes. Yeah. But yeah, we had eighteen Canadians, but there was no the you know, Belfast wasn't in it. Air, Air in Scotland was in it. Manchester. We were Car- raising stuff. Cardiff. Car- Cardiff was in it. Yeah. Uh, Did Brockle, you chuck Knuckles? Nottingham. I used to mix it up once early on, wherever it's... I went. I told you this story on the last pod. Where in, hey, in I play. can't remember. I talked to too I many think, people. I think there. I told you. So, <laughs> like, I try not to be a stupid man. I think I'm pretty intelligent. So, if I'm going to pick my spot, I pick someone like your size, right? Yeah. <laughs> Little guy. Yeah. yeah. Someone that I can handle. So, Right. We're playing you're saying you first... can handle me, eh? That's what you're saying. I right was now. A... No, that's not what I'm saying. I just, yeah. I think, like, I'm not going to pick someone my size or bigger. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So we're in, uh, I'm playing in Beijing Silk and we're playing, I forget who we're playing, but, you know, it's early on and I got, just came from Italy just after Christmas. I switched leagues. So there's a guy, like I said, there's a lot of heavies in the league. Like they fought, yeah. like it was, oh, yeah. like it was, it was a fun, they, they, they it enjoyed like it. it was, yeah. It was old yeah, school it was, hockey. Loved it. So, sure enough, typical Teeps fashion, I'm like fucking three or four games in, I see this kid, I'm like, face off, I give him a slash. He's like, looks at me like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like, pussy. I'm like, just fucking, let's go. Yeah. He's like, looks at me last, fucking, after the whistle, like, same thing, I'll fucking give him one of these. Like, I'm like, looking at him, like, he's like, like, looking at me, like, laughing, like, beat it, bud, like, whatever. So I go back to the bench and Darren Hurley, who's another Bram Lee guy, as a matter of fact, but he was one of one of the toughest guys in the league at the time. He goes, Teeps, what the fuck are you doing? I go, I, I think remember I'm gonna the mix story it up. now. I think, yeah. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna mix it up. And he goes, No, but that guy you're not. And the guy was like five nine. I go, What do you mean? He goes, He holds the record for Pims in the WHL. I'm like, Oof. <laughs> so next shift there's a there's a whistle. I'm like, Hey, buddy, how you doing, man? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> My bad, sorry. Yipe, yipe, yipe. Yeah. Um, Alfie, I got, I got in a fight, just so you know, when I was in the UK. Um, oh. It was my second last hockey game ever. Fought Kevin Noble. Real loser oh. out on the ice. Biggest loser yeah. I've ever played against, actually. Tried to hurt one of my buddies. I was right behind waiting for the drop pass. So I got in there. I, I chucked knuckles. Um, did you ever in the UK? Yeah, I fought, uh, I think I fought one time against. Is that uh, right? I can't see that happening. You didn't bother me at all. Like, you bothered me because you moved around too much. <laughs> but you didn't, like, bother me in a. No, I, it, was, it was my own game. fault, though. I, the guy was coming in. I gave him the old chicken wing to the head as he came in for the hit. And he just said, you want to go? And I was like, yeah, sure. He, it's like the one one fight you can actually YouTube of me, which 
it's not very exciting and there's not uh, much to it. Well, at least you did it, right? Yeah, well, I fought a bunch in the East Coast when I first started out. And my story is I ended up fighting a guy named Darcy Verano. I don't know if you know that name. He's been on the pod. But and I actually, a, I just got really? a message from a guy in, in Russia that wrote to me on YouTube and says, Darcy, if you're reading this, thank you. And he says, um, when he played in Russia and Chekhov, he would sit with the fans when he was suspended. And this yeah. guy said he was just a legend there, but I know exactly who Darcy is. I played with him in Syracuse in the AHL. He's a dandy. Yeah. I was just texting with him. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. So we were up against, I think it was, you maybe, shouldn't fight him. No, I didn't want to either, but we were in <laughs> wheeling and it was seven one. And you know what happens in the East coast league in the nineties, early two thousands, when it's someone's winning seven, one, it's a fight every shift. And I got out there and there was a line brawl going on and he ended up squaring up with me. He hit me four times in the forehead. Thank God it was in the forehead. And he would have splattered my face, my nose across my face. But I ended up getting like four Barney Rubbles. I couldn't put my helmet back on. I had to wear it like up above my hairline. I couldn't wear a hat the next day. I had to wear that like 1980s style because I had lumps on my forehead and I couldn't wear a helmet or a hat for probably half a week. Well, he he was way back in episode 26, and that was when I started realizing the kind of stories I could hear in my shed if I got to ever be there with the internet. But um, he told a story that when he was playing in Russia, the owner who took care of him and paid him good money, they weren't doing well or something. The one game, he put numbers in everybody's stall who they had to fight, and (laughs) and he got Yarmur Yager. He had to go out and jump Yarmer Yager in Russia. No, he didn't. And he did. You know what? I remember hearing that story, too. Didn't he get suspended for 10 games because of it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, like, so he shows up at the rink and 68 is in a stall. And that means it's time to jump Yarmer Yager. Can you imagine? Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's that's a tough one. Yeah. So, Darcy, I do know him. And he had an interesting career, too, man. And he chucked a lot of knuckles in Russia. (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah, he did in the states too. He was tough. He wasn't. He wasn't the biggest guy though, if I remember correctly. He wasn't. He didn't look like when you'd see him. He didn't look like that much. But boy, he was willing to do anything to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Um. So I get into how we know each other. Um. Alfie, every time I think of you, for some reason I think of Kansy. I think it's because he's a Colorado college guy. And a Straubing guy, right? You guys were yeah. basically the left side of the decor for a long time. Yeah, we were staple there, and like I told you, he was at my house more times than not. I yeah. found another guy that like. Hey, stop playing with people. your tally whacker down there. I can hear you playing with your tally whacker. Stop it. Getting excited. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Found somebody that liked beers more than teeps uh, with Kansy. <laughs> Kansy's a dandy though. Holy moly! Yeah. Um, and I always say shed guys no shed guys. I think it's interesting that. You guys are friends, and Kansy and I are friends, and oh, yeah. um, it's just all interesting how shed guys know shed guys, you know? <laughs> Some people know how to hockey. <laughs> yeah. Um, simple simple people, Wally. So when did you guys see each other last? I Probably playoffs. My retirement. And, oh, no, no, my retirement, retirement game. game, yeah. The yeah. night they retired your jersey? Yeah, that was that weekend. That would have been the last time I seen Elf because, yeah, I – I haven't been back to Europe since, nor has he invited me down to Phoenix. So, um, he goes to Florida. He's more of a Florida guy, not an Arizona guy. Yeah, never got the in- never got the invite. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, from our, you know, what I love about doing this though is when I can get people to reconnect. And uh, Jeepers, you guys got right into the banter with the group text there once we had this it's locked funny, down. You guys have no so- problem ch- chirping each other, do you? No, no, no. Me and LP were really close when we played together. Like we were like good buddies. Um, but it's funny, like after after I was on your pod, me and LP messaged back and forth quite a bit after. He's like, What the fuck did you say about me? Like this and that, yeah. like before and there, or whatever. Like so we connected then. Um, and that's and what then, that's what just fills my heart is that that's been happening yeah. with all these guys I have on. It just yeah. I think it makes yeah. my heart want to explode. Time time that's flies. A, you lose touch of people, and your pod reconnected us. It was great. Yeah, that's cool. and the best thing about hockey guys, I think, more so, and maybe it's just dudes in general, but like you can pick off with people like that, and there's just 
you just pick up pick up where you left off right like i yeah. said we were really close buddies right we'll and hockey together. guys are hockey guys though and it's like that's what i love about this is the guys i never played with yeah. even the different generations of dudes and it's like when i'm in beatingheim and you know things were going my way there for a little bit and uh when i'd come out they'd call me mr brent walton and I see like the jersey in the rafter. I see Teepo, and I'm like, I wonder what kind of punk he is. Like, how'd he get up there? You know? <laughs> I know yeah, we, were, we only played two years together, but we had a really good time. One of my favorite things with Teeps. I don't know if Stop I Stop playing with that thing. Put your tally whacker away. I can hear you clicking, nothing. clacking. You're my doing diabetes it. needle. I'm just keeping myself alive. Oh, okay. Well, you can sh- it jab time. yourself if you need to. All right. There we go. Uh, but. What what we came up with, I, I'm sure it was people that came up with the idea. You know the Cabina Fest. Oh gosh, you didn't tell me you started Cabina Fest in Germany. No, but we had a Cabina Fest every single Tuesday, even if we didn't have one. People and I would tell our wives and my fiance at the time that we had a Cabina Fest, and, and my ex wife at the time. <laughs> ex-wife now yeah but we yeah, would go out now, yeah. we would go out in Beatingheim, just the two of us and then every once in a while we'd get another straggler that would come but we would go out grab all- dinner have drinks all night and then go, go home at whatever time we wanted to and the wives just didn't ask questions didn't know any better and and there were, probably wasn't group chats like there are nowadays with, with the frowns no cell phones bud <laughs> yeah that's right oh there was no a cell, cell phone, phone but you had to hit the letter handy, nine yeah. seven times to get the letter s <laughs> the old handy yeah um <laughs> uh, yeah no i i know what you mean though and uh cabina fests were a great memory in germany i that i mean i could really shine at a cabina fest you know i'm a good eater i'm a good drinker you know <laughs> uh good Fun, culture man. though those cabina fests eh? so for the folks that don't know um you practice you have a hard one usually tuesdays right because you play friday three, sunday tuesday three usually, three a day right yeah well tuesday morning, morning skate then the gym and then practice again tuesday well, sucked i remember that I don't remember the gym in in Beatingheim. I don't think we ever did that. But yeah, well, it. maybe you weren't there. Don't, don't you remember the Timmy Leahy story when he, he said, "I'm not doing that exercise." <laughs> oh, the plyometrics with Uli. It Lee was. Story. I think it was your buddy Bearbanger. Oh, Bearbanger. Yeah. yeah, he had the gym in there. Or no, yeah. maybe it was Tom Pokel. I it can't. Maybe Pokel. I'm just, but we didn't was, do it that he was, first year. There yeah, wasn't so a lot of work. It was, it, was, it was it was Tom Pokel. It was Tom Pokel. Yeah. Well, when I you you were there. doing box jumps and all that stuff, like outside the room. Oh, and then we, were, we had to go to the gym. We're at some gym, and, and Timmy Leahy had a bad shoulder. <laughs> There's one guy you got to get on this pod. I think I told you last time it was Tim Leahy. Like, <laughs> I'll have to find him. Um, <laughs> the biggest beauty. When I, it's amazing who your coach is in Germany, how different your life can be. Um, when I went to Beatingheim, um, it was the most outrageous workouts you could imagine. Um, you could really test yourself as an individual trying to not die. Um, <laughs> and uh, it was bizarre. Uh, they made us go in July 1st and it was to only work out. They didn't even have ice in the arena till August. So we were there for a month with no ice and we're hockey players. Um, it really wasn't a lot of fun. Was that that Brittig? Yeah, that's right. Yep. Didn't you play with him, Teeps, in Dusseldorf? Yeah, I did, actually, now that you say that name. His nickname was British. Muff. Yeah, yeah he, was, uh, yeah. he was a different cat he as was, a coach. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I did play with him, yeah. We did win the championship. I never, I never clued in because you told that story well, last time, and I never clued in on the name. Mm-hmm. I never looked hard enough as the research team. I've been too busy. Um, I didn't see that connection either, but – um, yeah, Muff was, uh, he was a lot as a coach. He was very demanding. We did win the championship, but, uh, interesting way of playing hockey. Um, it was a good thing. We had a squad full of all-stars because we were awesome when we were beating him. Was it, was it like that when you guys were there? Like, it was like, we were the New York Yankees of the second league of Germany. We like, I, it was wild. The fifth, sixth D man we had, like what a couple of them went to the DL the next year and they were our last D man. Yeah, we, we had, we had good teams. Well, three, I think, eh? Yeah, we had really good teams. We were top heavy and a couple of times in the playoffs, I think we ran into some injuries. And what was in that first year? We had that Russian goalie that just kind of shut her down, Fatikov. Yeah, Fatikov. <laughs> Then we had Jumbo. 
<laughs> but yeah, I know we had a, we had a really good team and we had good young German talent. Like we had that Michael Wolf who ended up being the national player. Yeah. He was the captain. Teeps kicked him off his line like week two. Couldn't play <laughs> with him, he said. He's not smart enough, just too fast. Well, he was like, you gotta think the game more, kid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's one of those fast had, guys. Yeah. I think we had three, I think we had three forwards in the top ten in the league in scoring. Yeah. We had Elfie in the top five in the D in scoring. Well, like we had uh, like the we two had, years you guys played together, because I do have a pretty solid research team. Uh, Teeps had 88 and 85 points, which is wild in the second league. And Elfie had 68 and 61 points as a D bad. That's a uh, pretty impressive. We scored a lot of power play goals. Not going to lie. Yeah. Wow. We were probably, I don't think they kept percentages, but we were clipping in the thirties at least. And, yeah, and yeah, so sure. Elfie's up top and then Teeps, what are you doing? You the half wall guy? Or are you mucking around? I was, half, I was a half, no, I was a fuck. Buddy, come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course you were. Me too. We had uh, we had a right a right shot, Darren Ritchie, who he could pick corners from anywhere and had an absolute bomb. And then uh what the hell was that Belarus guy's name? Kovalev. Kovalev, yeah. He was unreal too. He probably one of the most, most talented most guys talented ever. player I have ever played with. Yeah, by far Easy, one of the most talented down. guys. Not Kobe, it's... why aren't you Kobe, why aren't you playing in the NHL anymore? Deeps. I come here, I make good money, I smoke cigarettes at Convenient Fest. Life is good. <laughs> <That's what I'm> <laughs> um, I find this I interesting because I come to go to beat a guy and I meet all the fans and stuff. And you know, fans always love to tell you about the guys of the past. And like, yeah. I would hear of all you guys. And it's funny now that I actually like hear you guys talking about the teams just like I had them, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but Beatingheim could be a fun place to play when you're winning. Oh yeah, yeah, they turn on you real quick too, like every other German town. But like every other German team, yeah. Uh, yeah sure. They, they, that uh, it was going really well for me until then. Uh, the budget went down, and then my teammates weren't as good, and we didn't win as many games. So then, you know, it just. It was interesting for me because I thought I was right in there. I thought I was there for my career. And then when it doesn't go that way and you just leave, it's like nobody even cared. It was like, this is weird. I cared way more than I guess anybody else did. Yeah, they <laughs> yeah. move on quick. Well, even they... after my second year there, I tried to re-sign back and they were like, nah, probably not. And I was like, I was kind of surprised. So, like, and you're saying probably <laughs> not after 61 points? Yeah, I was a little surprised. You know, Teep still got the bank, but they didn't sign me. I had to go. Yeah, right. <laughs> Double take, light logger, <laughs> gray batter cards. <laughs> on that note, I'm going to get one myself. Um, Car can, carry on, boys. Yeah, I will ask Elfie a question then. Um, had you still pay attention to what goes on in Belfast? Because uh, uh, yeah. Are they doing her these I, days? I followed last year, and they're in the. They're actually in that uh, Champions that? League. Champions League. I saw that. I, I talked to Colin Shields or text Adam Keith, Jeff Mason, every once in a while, just like, "Hey, how's it going? How's the team? How are you guys?" Yeah, hey. Kiefer's doing pretty well as being a coach, isn't he? Yeah, well, he's he's been the heartbeat of that team since I showed up there, even before I even got there. Like it was. I agree. Good. He was the heartbeat of the team. That's a good way of putting it. It's like, like you were really good and you were a star out there. And then that, yeah. like, other I, there was other people that were good, but like the way he played, um, I had to know when he was on the ice. Like I had to be very aware when he was yeah. in a game against me because you know he could light you up real quick. <laughs> yeah. No, it was he commanded a room. He commanded the the fan, like anywhere he went in, in the dressing room, outside the dressing room. Whenever he spoke, he's just one of those guys that whenever he spoke, everyone would listen. And if he had something to say, everyone would, you know, take it to heart. And and he played like, hockey the right way, right? Like he wasn't, he doesn't pick fights or do things dirty. He's, he's playing hockey as hard as it is or can be. And like I, people have asked me before, I think he was the hardest competitor I ever played against. Yeah. He would basically. So did, you, did you know We're another? Not talking about another. Well, no, another small town, another connection. Do you know Keeper's a Bramley boy? Is he really? Really? Yeah. They're from Bramley. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Him and Sheldon are from Bramley. So, so he grew up with my cousin. 
yeah. my one of my younger cousins uh, in Bramley. They're like I've known the family forever. And I just golfed with Brad Vanello. I don't know if you that name know that name. Bones yeah. played in England too. Um, won the Allen Cup last year. Actually, I just golfed with him in a tournament last week. And he goes, Kiefer's finally getting his his uh, what do you guys call it in when in England when they do the retirement Tes- game? testimonial testimonial. So he goes, he's flying over for Kiefer's testimonial. Nice. Oh, testimonials are as fun as life gets, man. So, um, so maybe you of, guys will get the invite. No, I won't. Got I don't so even. So many I, connections. I was only two years with him, and yeah, and I I only met him at a wedding. Mm. Showed him what I can do in a dance floor. You know. Yeah, but he's a Bramley. He's a Bramley guy. So there you go. Um, yeah, but know. speaking of the retirement games, the testimonial games is, um, I think. Uh, Teeps, that's how you came on. Was right around then was when Renee Schofs was having his Jersey retirement game, and yeah. I was invited to it, and I didn't find a way to make it happen, and it's been eating at me ever since, and I'm still pissed off that I couldn't find time. But I was already going to Cardiff to a testimonial game for Josh Batch's thing, and I didn't think I could pull off both. But then it's like that's the last time you guys saw each other because Alfie made the time to be there. And it's like it's a it's like your hockey wedding day, and you want the people. When he asks me to be there, I should be there, and it still pisses me off. I didn't go, you know. Yeah, but life yeah. happens too, right? I think we talked about it. But yeah, it does. You know, but... you know, you know the guys you invite. If they could make it, they'd make it, right? Right. So, uh, well, and good yeah, reason why they can't. So, and it is cool that in Beatingheim, I know like everybody that's jerseys are retired. Justin Kelly. Yeah. Dirk Robel, Renee Schofs, all one with me, and you. That's funny. Like Dirk and Renee, they were both what, like eighteen when we played together, teams. It feel like felt like they were like fifteen when they were. When they Renee were... might Renee Renee might have been twelve when we started playing with him. He was so <laughs> young, and <laughs> yeah. that, he's a guy that just plays hockey the right way, plays it hard, and he did it for twenty years for that team. <laughs> That's amazing. Five it's championships. Also a, it's also, a, a, you know, at that age, he should have been playing junior hockey somewhere because he was getting, you know, one to two shifts a game. For years. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, worked out, it worked out for him. Like, he stuck around for 20 years. But you think about talented young kids that go play in, the, you know, Bundesliga or the DL, they get two or three shifts. You know, Teeps tried to ruin Wolf's career in beating time. He put him on the third line and gave him two or three shifts. <laughs> Wouldn't give many PP time. Finally, that's should. I got him more. I got him more touches on the third line. <laughs> yeah, so it made him hungry, I guess. But I, but it's interesting, right? It's like that with anywhere in hockey. I think hockey's more fun being the best player on the ice than the sure. the guy getting a shift or two. And for those kids at that critical age, to, I mean, if they're just doing the pro, they better be getting ice time because man, some they're of them getting, just sit there and do nothing all they're getting, year. They're getting good practice time, but they're not getting any game time. Like it's almost games are where are yes. where you play hockey, really. You know, it worked out for Dirk too. I look happy for him. You know, he made a good career out of it. But for every Dirk and Renee, I've seen a young kid come in, play a couple shifts, and then they're gone. But, you know, they're but all three of those out. kids. All three of those kids, Alfie, and I think you'll attest to this. I'll throw Wolfie in there too. They were great kids. Yeah, like mm-hmm. they were happy. They never, they never sulked. They never were negative that I saw. Like they were, they're just they're happy to hard, be around the team. They wanted to get better, and they and hard they looked up. Guys, to, they looked right? up to us as the imports, kind of thing. You know how it is with the young Germans, right? Oh, they and look then, up to the imports. Are, if the imports treat them right, they're going to give you everything they got, right? Well, and it can so, be like that. Great kids. It, it can yeah. be like that. But then, like, there was a team I played on um, where some younger Germans, like, started getting the attitude and started getting the – I don't even know what it was. Um, it's like, when we weren't playing well and then people start pointing fingers and um, – there was one year that was very trying and beating high that way. And it was, yeah. it comes from one or two of them. And it can, it can trick it when you're not around the right people and the right people are teaching kids yeah. the wrong way to be, then it can become a thing. And um, that year was very difficult. It was my last year in beating high. I thought the culture was totally fucked and I hated it. I got pretty well depressed during the season. I gained some weight because I went back there ready to go, ready to help Beatingham win again. 
And I think at like 20 games in, I was at 20 goals and we were in last place and I was given her and I just didn't know how to handle it. I didn't know how to handle losing again. And then these, some of these kids, it was, it was, it, it wasn't a good thing. And to think of the way Beatingheim was when we won the championship and the team we were and the imports, the Germans were all one team. It was it seeing it the other way is no fun. <laughs> yeah. I was lucky enough to be on pretty good German teams all the time too. And it can get really clicky in Germany too. If you got, you know, some. And you hear about it from the other teams too, right? You hear about there's some of those older Germans that are legends or whatever, and they just do whatever they want and it's their team. Yeah. Yeah. Or you're the only losing, the only losing team I played on really was in Dusseldorf. I think we finished just outside the playoffs, but. Yeah, there was no toxicity, or there was, there was a couple of crazy coaches, but it was, you it even was said you did, like Dusseldorf wasn't the most fun you've ever had either playing. No, no, it wasn't. There was I had a couple of conkeys mixed in there that year too. <laughs> Con- conkeys are well, I went, fun. I went, I went that year. I went like twenty-two games without. I think I had like I don't even know if I scored. It took me forever to get my first goal. So then I'm beat my, and the coach who was a crazy motherfucker, Michael Calma was his name. Like I was scared shitless of him. Like he was just <laughs> like he was just a doesn't didn't speak English, just like only German and like one of those guys. You guys know what I'm talking about. It, yeah. So one day we're playing like I forget who we're playing, but he, he brings me in the shower like before he's like, listen, he goes, in English, I don't give a fuck if you score a goal. He goes, keep playing the way you're playing. Like it was one of those coach things. And sure enough, I scored that game. It was like fucking <laughs> and, well, and yeah, when coaches show they got your back, and it's like yeah. in Ger- Germany when they can, teams and coaches can start getting on guys. Man, yeah. it's it's hard to pull it around for some people, right? If you don't, if they well, don't have your back, and then a guy doing something like that shows you he cares, and then he believes in you, and that he just wants you to go out and play, and then that's when you start playing better. I don't know. That's how I think. I'm a I'm a but aspiring 100%. coach now, right? I'm an under thirteen coach, you know. <laughs> Molding the youth. Molding right. our youth. Yeah, yeah. yeah but no, then no, that, no. that Dusseldorf year, y'all, you're right because it wasn't the most fun year. Like considering the years I had in Beatingham before that, wasn't even close. Yeah, as from a fun perspective, right? Like just and that's that's a big part of living, isn't it? Like so, and doing it for a year. Absolutely, yeah. And, and I'm in my thirties now, so. I think at the time I was like 33. So I could, I could have signed for one more year there. I had one more year, like a one year contract offers and other DEL teams, not top, not top teams either. So could have went to wherever and same kind of situation. So I didn't, I didn't have an agent anymore. I didn't need one at the time because I was there for so long. Yeah. So I yeah. called Beatingheim up and I said, Hey, you want me to come back? Give me a two year deal for the same money as I was going to make for one year in the DEL. And they said, yes. So I'm like, I'll go. why wouldn't I go back where I love? Yeah. Two years. And be on a good years, team that has a chance. And to be win. on a good team with guys I know and have fun. I'm going to retire soon anyway. Right. My kids are getting older. I'm 30. I'll be 35 at the end of that contract. So it was like an easy decision for me. No, for sure. And but, Alfie, but you fun, fun had a lot to do with it. At the time. Fun does have a lot to do with it. And I, it was when, when we won it that year, fun had a lot to do with it. We had Monday fun days and we, every week somebody would plan a Monday fun day. And like we, it, it did start getting excessive. It did start getting carried away. But like when somebody hosts a great Monday fun day, well, you don't want them to ha- do a better one than you. Right. So things got things amped up a bit and then we did slow down for the second half. But um, I thought that's what brought our team together. That's why we had so much success was, Everybody was invited. It was a hockey family. It was Germans. It was imports. It was everybody. And everybody was going out on the Monday, right? Yeah. 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 We had good Kabinen Fest in Beatingheim too. I remember they were they were solid. And we had a pretty good showing too. Everybody would be yeah. there. Everyone would stay a fair amount. And obviously the older guys, the kids would leave early and stuff, but it was it was always a good showing. The young kids would stay to the end and it, it helps. It was, it, you know, one of the coolest, one of the things you miss about not playing. I don't miss playing hockey. I agree. Like, 
stuff like that. Like I miss a Kabina Fest or make up a Kabina Fest with Teeps or. Why well, it, like it's that. interesting what I like I consider shed guys is like I think the good people in the game like after we love hockey so much or we like the environment so much and being on a team that like when it was a Kabina Fest we were in it for the full pull, you know, like there are guys that go to Cabina fest and they're, tr- they, they don't want to be there. They want to go home and do their own thing. And yeah. I mean, you couldn't pull me out of one of those, you know, Lord, Lord hates a quitter. Wally. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Especially when you like, that's your time to shine. It's Cabina me and Elfie, fest. Me and Elfie made up her own. <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> you, you remember uh, Peter Goulda teeps? Yeah, he concussed me when he played. I played against him in the DEL. Oh, really? I used to He's mess one of the with guys him. That caught me. Oh yeah. I used to I mess with him when he would leave the Cabina Fest. Remember, I put the chicken yeah. wing bones in yeah, his two-piece his stick. stick. Yeah, shaft. He was like in practice <laughs> rattling it around, couldn't figure it out. Took his blade out of the glue. It's the glue. glue. <laughs> was in the glue. He took it back on the ice, and the chicken wings were rattling around. In his <laughs> you put a chicken wing in his shaft. Oh, like chicken three or four bones. chicken wings. Oh my the God. bones. The um, so I have a great beating hype story. And uh, this was actually the same year as talking about the toxic environment of there was a guy that came to our team that we had been struggling all year. And then we bring in this guy that can play and he shows up for a practice and it's like, wow, this guy can play. But then he, a German. He's a German, but I like he He was a player, but then you realize what his faults are and why he's not different places is he was the worst teammate ever, like actually ever. And um, we ended up winning the Pokal. We're a terrible team in the regular season. We're in the playdowns, but somehow the second and third league Pokal, we win it all. And that kid from being such a bad teammate brought the rest of the team together that somehow all of us (laughs) hating him so much, The Germans then were getting along with the imports. And you know what was interesting was uh, our captain, after we won the Pokal, that guy gets out of the room immediately. We're all celebrating a championship, and this guy's gone. Our captain pissed in his skate, filled it right (laughs) to the top of the boot of piss. And all the guys watched, and nobody told the guy. And then all of a sudden, we were a team again. (laughs) Uh, chicken wings in the stick. That's a little easier to handle, right? That's just chicken wing bones. He was, well, he, he had to have been what, 42 years old when we played with him too. The weather, weather, little hardcore, great teammate, hard, like just oh, work his guy. ass off. Like just, but yeah, just, yeah, he was a family man, like older, just. He'd wear his yeah. gold Rolex every day, drive his Mercedes yeah. back to check every chance he got. Yeah. Because uh, he had he a was, good he had a good career before that, right? He came down to the, you know the goals the guys come down leagues. Yeah. Oh yeah. So he was on the tail end, right? So he's playing with us. Um okay. <laughs> I got one for teeps here. Um now that you know y- you meet, you connect, and then you start kind of you know seeing how people are doing. Your son had a hell of a, a playoff run in lacrosse this summer, didn't he? Oh man, that was yeah, they so they went so it's in his uh he just turned 20, so he's second last year of junior A lacrosse. So they were ranked number one in Canada all year. So junior A lacrosse is like the OHL for lacrosse. That's right. the highest junior league you can be in. So they went it's a twenty. It's a twenty game summer season. So they went twenty and zero, swept six nations in the first round, three and zero. Then they swept uh, um, Toronto Beaches in the in the uh, Semifinals, four straight, best four to seven. So they've not they, lost a game going into 20, the finals. 27, 27 and 0. Like this team is, they were being heralded as one of the best junior A lacrosse teams ever. Yeah, if you never lose, in the middle I of the season, Burlington, Burlington had made a trade for a goaltender from Peterborough. So we played Burlington in the Ontario finals and uh, they beat us four games to two. It wow. was, we were up, we went, we lost game one at home, went. One there and one in Burlington game two. They came back to Orangeville. We won game. So we're up two games to one. And we lost three games in a row. And if you had told me that team was going to lose three games in a row, I would have said, I would have bet 
any amount of money. Not right. that they couldn't lose, but three in a row. And then Burlington yeah. went on and won the Canadian Championships, the Minto Cup, which is like the, the Memorial Cup, round robin, and then same, same format. And so uh, was that Burlington team in the regular season? Like they were part of? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We beat them twice. Right. Yeah, no, huh. it was it was a great run, and they they caught fire, and the goalie was on. It was just perfect storm to beat us. Yeah. Um, so it was. Were you uh, so but it was fun. No, 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 no. no. It's, is it was uh, so uh, was Cole is Cole this year his freshman year that at RIT or is he? No, he's sophomore. So he. But that's came, that's. So he went to school, then came back and played junior A. Hey, you can do that. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So you can play. You can play junior. You just can't play pro. Oh, so while know. you're playing college, and, you can play junior and college still. is okay with him playing the other lacrosse where he could because get injured the, because the the OLA or junior. Yeah, but I think Alfie was referring to like if you play NCAA, you can't play OHL hockey or WHL hockey, right? Right. Yeah. yeah you can't so, even play junior A. You got to stay in college. Like you can't go back and play junior. Yeah. A. So it's it's different for lacrosse for some reason or another. Maybe it's the governing ball i don't know yeah but you're it's all the kids like almost every kid in his team plays in the states ncaa right so yeah so he get plays in they must be season, a squad so. then eh and they're all in orangeville <laughs> well orangeville's got a lot like it's a lacrosse town like it's one of those yeah heads of lacrosse kind of thing but they're bringing kids um, from all over to this team no well, we had <clears throat> we had uh six or seven indigenous kids two from america we had one kid from Long Island, New York, playing for us. I saw um, the fight with that one guy, the long hair, the the First Nations kid. He just pumped crazy that crazy buddy, man. We had a few good fights this year, like and that kid that fought with the with the ponytail. Yeah, he's a year younger than Cole. He's only like just turning nineteen. The guy looks like an animal, and he's like one of the top scorers in the league. Yeah, but just loves to fight, like loves yeah. it. Lacrosse fights. Are so different than hockey. Players. Oh, I was. That's what it I is, was gonna say. They're not on skates, man. They're on shoes. If you go see some of my post, Wally, like some of the fights this year, like we we brought a kid in from Alberta this year. They traded for him halfway through the year because we we thought we needed a, someone that had that would just fight that, so the other guys didn't have to fight. Mm-hmm. Like like an enforcer, like an old school enforcer. So this kid came in and he fought some time. Like oh, in lacrosse fights, take the bucket off. Take the jersey off. Take the, sh- the arm pads off. It's like a and just and, and it's a street fight on it's a street fight. Yeah, yeah. But with and no jersey to grab, right? So it's like, what do you mean makes, no jersey makes to sense grab? That you got to bring they somebody take the from jersey Alberta. off. They would take the yeah, jersey yeah, off Alberta, too. They, yeah. they go straight you topless. Alberta, you Alberta guys are top healthy. Yeah, it makes sense to bring in a good old Western boy. Any any Western boys listening would understand. I you. oh yeah, I've heard about oh, this you, Western boy thing oh, forever. Oh the, yeah, oh yeah, terrible guys. Yeah, no, I I hey, hey Wally, these. they did have a best they did have a best to nine playoffs back in the day. <laughs> yeah, best to nine. That's best the of nine. <laughs> Who thought that idea? Um. <laughs> okay. Can you imagine some of the wars back then? Best of nine. Oh. That no. would be the worst thing ever. Well, it, Ten hour bus of, trip. but speaking of Germany, then is back. Why well, we used to play in Weisswasser, um, white, beautiful white water Germany. I don't know if you guys played there, but um, yeah, well, I did. Yeah, when, yeah. When I remember looking at posters in the lobby and stuff. You know, you get bored. You can only play so much two touch. And there, before the wall came down, Weisswasser played Berlin like legit. Like seventy times a year, or 50, fifty times a year, fifty-two times. I played yeah. with a guy that uh, Stefan Mann. You guys may remember that name, but he was—he's a white vice Foster kid, and he would tell me the stories of watching these games. And they would play, you know, tw- whatever twenty-six games in Whitewater, twenty-six games in Berlin, and that's all they would play. And Berlin always had the best teams because they were the national team players and all that. And they might keep might. You know Mike Mikey Botter? Yeah. So Mikey Botter played with me in Beatingheim. He he was from Vice Boxer. So he would tell that story that he played like that was the that's what they did. And he's a he's a funny he was a funny guy, man. Every every whatever the whatever the day is that the wall came down, or I don't know if it's when it came down or but every single East German got a hundred euros. Or 100 Deutschmarks, whatever Deutschmark. it was at the time. Probably Deutschmarks, yeah, because they hadn't cleared the euro. 
But when the wall came down, they gave every single East German 100 Deutschmarks on that day. Every year that day came up, Mikey bought a, I go to the bank today, get my 100 euro. I go, I think that was a one-time shot, Mikey. No, 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 no. This day, <laughs> just <laughs> so funny. Yeah. Oh, uh, I couldn't imagine playing a team 52 times. You imagine playing imagine. the same team the whole season? No, it's that's just, all they had. And one team was better than the other team. You imagine yeah. just getting like I guess I, I guess Krim- I guess Krimichow wasn't even in the league then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh but yeah, be interesting, that's for sure. <laughs> oh. Um Alfie, I don't know if episode 72 is so long ago. Would I have brought up Greg Schmidt, your former teammate in Straubing? Yeah, Schmidty. Yeah. I won the cha- I was a Deutsche Meister with him in Beatingheim, right? Yeah, he's a he's a beauty. He had a tough he ended up like breaking his back or his butt yeah. or his coccyx. And that kid he, he played the game right. He was an animal. Yeah. He's tough as nails too, Southpaw. Uh, yeah, he had, he had some bad injuries in his career. He, it was kind of well, yeah, he, he did play a hard game, and yeah, yeah, I I think I heard that it was like out of practice when he got really hurt when he was in Straubing, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, like feet first into the boards, and I think he hurt his coccyx and pelvis, and well, because like in Germany, back when we were there, for sure, there if you get hurt at practice, there isn't a lot of medical team around to help out no you, you know? get your you get the patroyer running out there with an ice pack <laughs> and this cold spray and spraying cold magic spray, spray. Yeah. well then you get the volturine and that yeah. stuff can cure anything that's the post game volturine <laughs> yeah wipe it on anything it'll cure anything and a few half a vi- and a few half a vitamins yeah that's what actually cures it half <laughs> a vitamins i was allowed to drink though i was too fat that was the first thing that my wife got after she gave birth in Germany. They give the, the women Hefeweizen. and they said it helps, you know, produce the milk for them. So she just had a kid and she's in there sipping on a Hefeweizen in Germany and Bavaria. Seriously? Yeah. Never heard of that one. Right off the hop. Yeah. The one I- you, haven't had, you haven't had a baby in Germany, Wally. Um, I haven't. My my son it's came my out there, though. <laughs> um, I didn't see my yeah. wife drinking a half a bite at a hell broad derby. I'll say that. <laughs> I think Teeps is the only human being I've seen that can drink half a bite in from start to finish in a night. Really? Seven yeah. or eight. I, it's like it's eating delicious. eight loaves. Of, it's like eating eight loaves of bread, though, for me. I oh, man, it's so full. So full. One or, one or two, and then I got to switch to something else. But he can maybe, just maybe, maybe, maybe even mix in a few darts back in the day. I'll... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even at all, that clears up some stomach space. Right. <laughs> uh, the Hefe Weizen wasn't for my body type. You know, that that it wasn't good for me, you know. <laughs> no, it's not good for anybody in large doses. But Alfie, we would have talked about this way back when, but you did start in the Oberliga, eh? And worked your way up from going to bad abling. I to believe, having your, yeah. To having your jersey retired in the DL. That's pretty neat, eh? Yeah, it, it worked out good. My coach in Bad Eibling was the guy that Teeps was talking about, that Bear Vonger. He brought me from the third league up to the second league with him <coughs> and then uh, had two good years in Straubing or in Beatingheim, and then Beatingheim didn't re-sign me and then went to Straubing. So but, that's what actually what happened. Beatingheim didn't re-sign you when you had those two years there? Yeah, I remember trying to re-sign there, and they're like, no. And I was like, why? Well, Who was the coach, Alfie? Leech, I was Uli? I was talking to Uli trying to resign, and he's like, "No, we're not going to pay you." Was, was it like, the same so with you guys, or was that fair? That wouldn't pay you. I don't know. I they, I didn't I didn't get into it. I already had an offer in Straubing, so yeah. I, I took it to Beatingheim, and I was like, "You guys will match this," and they're like, "No, we don't want to." But it was pretty good though. We we ended up beating out Beatingheim in the first round the next year, so that was nice. That feel good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. Was it the same for you guys where, like, in Europe, it's totally different, man. And people in North America have no idea that, like, there's guys that expect or hope to have contracts by Christmas. And it may not even be with the team they're playing on, you know? Yeah. Well, it's like, GTA, it's like the GTHL in Toronto and minor hockey. It's <laughs> kids I don't, different I, teams than and I, I don't want anything to do with that. That's not my scene. Sorry. You no, know, I did. I did, but I, the year 
before I left when I, we were in the playoffs. We played Straubing teams. Remember that? And yeah. Christian Rode was in that. I already signed to go. I already signed, and we were playing Straubing, the team that I'm going to play for next year, and we ended up knocking them out of the playoffs. Yeah. And I already signed to go to that other team. It is, but like I mean, it is your job, and you're going out there to do the best job you can every time and you're on that team that year i get i get it it's just it would make more sense to make everybody wait till the season ended because um for me it was a bit distracting the one year in landsuit my first year like we win the first round of playoffs and the second round of playoffs and then both teams offer me contracts and then i'm like thinking about that stuff as we're going into the finals and it's like i'd rather just not know (laughs) until I'm yeah. done doing what I'm doing. But that they take all their influence from soccer and that's how it's done in soccer. Right. And even, even to that extent in the UK league, like whoever wins a regular season is a champion. And kind of like that's, soccer. and isn't that bizarre too? Like that's yeah. different. The year you guys won at Belfast, weren't you guys way ahead of everybody too? Oh, we, we ended up winning the, the title with uh, two months to go. How you guys must've been really good. We just we got on a roll. We had a good team. Like it was one of those teams that gelled well, and we. I wasn't part of the that guy. Was a family guy at the time, but the guys went out all the time. They had a good time. I lived in a little separate town. Isn't it interesting when teams have fun, they win? Yeah, like they they had a lot of fun. They had a lot of fun, and you know, I had the two young kids and was out in my little town. I understand. I just in Cardiff when I had. my little fella and then had my daughter that first year is I was living close enough to the guys that I could walk the stroller over to their places all the time with the kids yeah. and, you know, have a time and then walk home. <laughs> yeah. We actually lived in, I was still right in, involved. I wasn't in a different town. <laughs> oh, that was, that was pretty much teeps. I remember him. He had, yeah, I, I think you just had Cole and yeah, probably would have been right around there. And you had the two hey. girls. Cole was a baby, but he was only there for like a year or so, I think. Two years. Yeah. Maybe. I can't remember. I think he was I figured, born in that. I figured it out, Elfie. I figured it out. <laughs> yeah. It's, well, uh, yeah, brings back Dan- memories. This Danny's, talk. Danny's wasn't there when you were there, was it? Danny's bar? You talking me? Uh, um, I only heard about Danny's. Uh, yeah. Danny was my coach, though. Oh, okay. um, yeah. Rest so, in peace, Danny. That was. Yeah, yeah. he was a beauty. What a he guy was a he beauty. was. Yeah, he was. He's a great guy. <laughs> I'll never, yeah. When he, I, he did liked me. I liked him. Um, it's too bad we weren't when it meant as many games. Um, when he was there, because I think he had coached a lot of the kids coming up, and yeah, I, I think he might have maybe thought some of them could handle pro and do more than what was realistic. And, um, we had a tough start to that year because we just weren't good enough. And, um, uh, but like I loved playing for that guy, man, and he was—you could tell he was right up my alley. <laughs> like, no, he was. He, I, I, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I, I just he. I wish we would have done better with him as the coach because playing for him, if you could win, would have been awesome. But we couldn't win with who we had. I played with him for like six or seven years, or whatever it was, and he was so. The first year I came in and he had the bar and grill and we were on the team. While he's playing, played. he's got a bar and grill. And that in that first year that I got there, if you recall the last time I was on the pod, like we were we were playing in the against the school for the blind. Like we had a, we built a team for the Bundesliga. They kicked us out because the team dropped out, went bankrupt. So they put us back down to the Oberliga. So we had like Darren Ritchie and Myself got was there. Timmy Leahy. We had a team built for the Bundesliga to compete. That's who they paid for, and we played in the Oberliga. And just smashed. And that's why. Everybody. That's why I had. That's why I had like whatever had like three points again. Like it was. It was. We killed everybody. So you know how it is. And it's like everyone loves you. They don't care. It's the Oberliga. No. You're just killing everybody, and you're winning. And it's like you go to Danny's after. <laughs> it would have been. It was so, so much fun. fun. Probably one of the funnest, other than my Daytona Beach year. That would be year. And and I and now that you say that, I got to bring it up because I always say Daytona Beach, Ohio, from when I played in Dayton, Ohio, for the Bombers. 
You yeah. actually played in the real Daytona Beach. The real Daytona Beach, yeah. That wow. was gonna be my. That was gonna be my uh, case, Sarah, as it were. I was just gonna finish after St. Mary's. I was gonna go there, play one year. I was making, I think, four hundred bucks U.S. a week. Just gonna play there and have fun for a year. Start my life. And once you get over to Germany, you can get right into it, right? Like, no, you, you know, I'll. I'll Alfie, you get to a Christmas market or you get to a beer tent and you're like, geez, this is this is right up my alley. <laughs> I can't yeah. believe the Jets. I can't believe the Jets are going to tie this up. I know. This is a close game. You I got right. a question for you. I got a question for you, Alfie. What's that? Are you like, were you an Aaron Rodgers fan or a Packers fan? Packers fan. Okay, so you're still a Packers fan. You're not a Jets fan now. No, absolutely not. No, like, it, okay. it's like it's like because <laughs> you love Rodgers. Oh, I love them. Still do. It's too bad he hurt himself. But I, it's like you know the German hockey. They love their teams. They don't love guys. Like guys come and go, and that's kind of where I am with the Packers. Hey, I agree. But I was curious. I knew how hardcore Packers. Well, you were. and that's what's weird for me is that's not really where I'm at as a hockey guy. Um, for hockey, yeah. I cheer for people. Um, I yeah. cheer for the guys I know, and um, I mean, I could see. Oh my! Uh, sorry, what? you're right you're into bad. this. Must be an exciting Steve, football. You're game. about two minutes behind me. You must be deep in the sticks. They scored two minutes ago. <laughs> I'm on. I'm on the internet. I'm on the fire stick. I I, I watch all your stations down the states. Well, FBI is going to be at your house soon. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that, that that was the best thing about the Germany too. Like they love their teams. Like they in Straubing and in Bietigheim too. But Straubing was such a hockey town, and they lived for that team. The yeah. 50, well, the thing is, Europe, Europe, Europe in general, whatever sport you're talking about, I honestly think the term fanatical. Yeah. You understand where fan comes from? Yeah, right. they, they are fanatical. In, like they, they live, and, live die. and die. Yeah, like uh, yeah. it's amazing some of the things you can see over there and how into it they can be and you're right it's fanatical well, um, look look how look how we were treated in how how low of hockey leagues to be playing in the grand scheme of things it's pretty down there right like it's like yeah. you know what i mean like it's i used to say we do autographs and it was like I, i'm not saying this to be discouraging or anything but it's like you're signing like grown men's leather jackets and stuff and it's <laughs> like i i i am here because i couldn't make it in the best leagues yeah like it's like we hey, like come on you're bringing me guys. down now come on you know no 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 but we it's did true, pretty but good too come on they, Craig. they didn't care whether we we're winning in the Oberliga or the bundesliga they just wanted us to win yeah right and that's what care. it's all about though it's like the way i look yeah. at this and what i'm doing is um not everybody made the nhl and made millions very very few did but a lot of us loved hockey and loved winning and loved being part of teams. Absolutely. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's a lot of trophies out there in the world. Um, there's a lot of people that get to experience winning and it's interesting. The people that do seem to be the right type of people. And I think it doesn't matter what league you're in. It takes the right type of people to win shit. Mm. I would not disagree, Wally. I've had better teams and lost than teams that have come together and you win with. What's that? I've been on some better teams that should have won based on talent, but I've right. also won with lesser talented teams that came together and were A better. Absolutely. When guys are willing to do more for each other, then they actually do more for each other. It's like when you can just get out of the way of that block shot, or you're like, I got to eat this one for the boys, you know? I don't know if, if you guys had a chance to watch Deion Sanders' pregame speech last yeah. week. So like good. It, gave, it gave me chills. Like It was like, think about the guy beside you, right? It was about the guy beside you. And just, it was like, it's, and true. it's so true. It it's is so simple, true, though. Right? And that's what it's about is like when you don't let them down, that's when you win, when you're willing yeah. to yeah. do it for each other. But, I do think, and people may think I'm crazy, especially whatever. It's like, I think Monday, fun day, I think having Cabina Fest or whatever it may be, those are important days to winning at the end of the year. Yeah. Cool. I mean, and every team in Germany has Cabina Fest, but it's the ones that where the guys stick around and they have fun and yeah. they play, play practical jokes. And, and they and have they something to talk and... about for the next week or yeah. two of practice, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
And we talked about this last time, Wally, too. I know you're going to read something there, but. Oh, don't worry about me. Like the, the, stuff. Best, the, best, the best teams we were on in Germany, I think, when you all attest, the imports and the Germans got along. The imports respected the Germans. 100%. Especially the youngest ones, younger ones, and made them feel part of the team. Like, I know, I don't know you only from a couple pods or whatever, but I got a good grasp, I think, on you. But I know playing with Alfie for two years, like we're the same type of dudes. Yeah. We Said. didn't give a shit if you were if you were Dirk Robel, Rene Schoofs, or Andre Kovalev. Yeah. We're the, no, they're we're all, all we're acting the same way. Like it's we're, like we're, no, all, we're all dudes on a team. It was, that yeah, was actually exactly. the coolest thing that inspired me to start having German guys on again. And um obviously I when my career ends, the UK is a better taste in my mouth than um Germany getting asked to leave and not getting signed back as like a I think I was like 29, 30 years old. I wasn't even old and nobody wanted me anymore. Um, I wasn't having many Germans on this. I never had many guys that played in Germany. There's definitely a big pool of fish I could pull into the boat here. And I never thought of it until one day I was, I wasn't sure who to have on next. I didn't know who to talk to next. And I put in like Landsuit Brent Walton into Google and then I find this article from 2020. I hadn't played in Landsuit since 2007 8. There's an article in a Munich newspaper that a kid I played with in Landsuit, my first year in Germany, he was his first year pro, wrote that I was one of the most influential players he ever played with. And that inspired me to get chatting with all of these German guys again and get back into Germany. And it's like, maybe I did have an impact and maybe the, that player Philip Mikkel. It was okay. episode three seventeen. Yeah. Apparently when I showed up to Landsuit, they thought I was the new bus driver, not a new player. <laughs> it's, it's funny though, the impact you can make on people. Well, and you don't realize it, right. And you're just doing your thing. And then when you hear that, and it's like, well, Brandon Dietrich probably didn't realize what he was doing for me as a kid in high school or Rob Collins. Yeah. And uh, when I tell them that they can't believe it. And then, you know, you see it now with kids, the, the kids that are older, they look up to them. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, we, we used to bill it whl players growing up and the impact they had on my life was crazy mm -hmm. one of them ended up playing in the nhl and the the sutter brothers were there and just being around like it gives you something to look up to and then see them succeed see what they do to get where they are uh that's that was probably the biggest dad when i had of all time was this summer i reached out to ryan o'reilly who was training nearby and i thought i thought he might he could use my services or if he wanted to, I was here. And then we ended up going out like eight times and he was let my son come out. And then my son got to see him. Like there was no coach on the ice. There was no one pushing him. He was doing this cause he wanted to get better. Like he's in his thirties and he was trying in the summer, like a world-class guy. And um, it was pretty neat to have my son watch that as a 10 year old, you know? Yeah. Does he live in that area? I saw you. You posted a couple pictures with him out there, and you guys were on the ice. Yeah, he's he locked now. Um, no, he's in Godrich, thirty minutes down the road. Um, and then uh, he's gone now back to Nashville. Kids were starting school or whatever, and but he yeah. is says he's coming on into the shed. That'd be an exciting be, day. That'll be a good day, right? I would get say. A real Get yeah. a real hockey player at some point. <laughs> well, yeah, you got to get the good one someday. <laughs> you got to build the base first, Wally. Right? Yeah. You just, yeah. Well, but the thing is, you got to recycle always... a couple guys first. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Well, the thing is, there's a lot of guys you could be recycling. And I know there's guys probably wondering why I haven't reached out to them, but uh, I just like talking to the good guys. I don't give a shit what league you play in. Um, I wouldn't be having him on if he wasn't the guy he was. Um, like he's a dandy. He's just like us. He's just really, really good. <laughs> and that's, right, and that's the thing. That's right. the thing. When you... sorry, Alfie, go ahead. No, I just said I've only heard good things about him. Yeah, there's nothing bad to say about the guy. It's wild stuff to see. Actually, he's like the, he's like he's this he's the hockey star hockey needs is the type of guy like him that would just do anything for anybody. And like the last time I was out with him, I hadn't asked for anything. I I volunteered i wanted to be there 
I wanted to learn from him to help my under 13s get better. Cause you know, if they get better at hockey, it's going to make me feel better if they go and do anything cool. And if we win it this year, so I yeah. went and helped him out. And uh, the last day he gave me a signed stick for helping him out. And uh, you know, not everybody would think to do something like that. And I didn't think to ask for it. He just right. gave it to me and it was That's nice. Pretty cool. How gross is that curve? It's something. It's different than the rest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. But it's like it's so far at the toe that it's like I always wondered how a backhand would work, but you're never backhanding that far up your blade. So no. um, I'm not, I don't know. I don't know how it would be, What's but the purpose of it, you saw him play. Like, was he using it for to- like pulling it in or like, what's the point? Well, of he can do all the stuff you're supposed to do with a puck. But the one thing I noticed he could really do with it was wraparounds. Like he oh, can yeah. wrap it around on that little cradle thing, like from right behind the net. But um, I don't know how he got into it, but he can sure use it the way you're supposed to use a hockey stick. Interesting. It is interesting. <sighs> Yeah, I don't know how you ever start doing that, right? Maybe I'll have to ask him when he comes to the shed. Yeah, that, mm-hmm. I've only seen him and Brian Maloney that had that. Maloney had that gross curve, too. He did? Oh, yeah. Someone else did, too. A Russian, I think, had that sick toe thing. When did you yeah, play with I, Maloney? In Straubing. Okay, because I he was a I, Ravensburg guy. I just had on the captain that he won oh, with yeah. in the mm-hmm. second league. No, he was in uh, Straubing with me. I, I was just up there. I visited with him uh, this summer. We went up to Vancouver. He's up in Chilliwack. Yeah, he's coaching, eh? Uh, yeah, he's doing some of that stuff. Um, oh, yeah, he's like coach GM of the Junior A team. Yeah, Chilliwack Chiefs, Chilliwack. I think it's called. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, you guys got anything you guys want to talk about before while I look at my notes? I got a question, actually. The Fetter market, was that in Beatingheim when you guys were going? Because I just see now that, like, the team now is going to the Fetter market, and I saw a picture of the team at the Fetter market, and boy, oh boy, could I let my hair down at that place. That's not the one that was in Stuttgart, though, right? Like That's that was, the one no, in no. Beatingheim, Fetter right at the start of the Yeah, the horse we'd be in the, we We used to be in the parade. Okay. Yeah. There's a parade, but then there's also a beer tent that's as legit yeah, yeah, as anywhere we else. in the parade, but the beer tent any beer tent in Germany with the, with the local festival is going to be the same as. Yeah. But yeah. in Beatingheim, the, in Beatingheim, the problem is that there are people from Beatingheim that know who you are. You gotta, you gotta get a to other towns, right? So you can... but when you're winning, no one cares, Wally. That's right. That's true. Unless you don't win, <laughs> then you do know. When you're <laughs> winning, you, when you're winning, you don't pay for shit. See, and, <laughs> and I went to the Fetter market every year, whether we were winning or losing. <laughs> you remember those Basin workshops? Did you ever do those tapes where you went to the people's houses? The wine? Yeah, I think a couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You talking like Basins? Wine, so. Basin Werkschaft, where you like the people for two weeks out of the year in that area can sell their local food, wine, and beer from their houses. They convert their garages into restaurants for two weeks, and you can hop from people's houses and just get smashed on the local wine. Well, so I, I, there was one though that was like a staple. It wasn't like it was a restaurant, but it was only for certain times of the year when I was there. And this was where I hosted my Cabina Fest. (laughs) <laughs> and things got away from the team. And then like the uh, Russian guy or Kazakhstan, I'm not sure which he was, but um, he decided to do Russian knives on their old nice table and like put his hand out and was doing the knife right around his fingers. And uh, they weren't that thrilled with us being there for my cabina fest and weren't that thrilled with me for hosting it there because of the Russian knives, <laughs> you know, ruining the table. Right. Um, but it was my favorite restaurant in town. Um, loved going there. They had the Schweine Halls, the pig neck, lovely meal. So if you guys could go back to Germany and order a meal, teeps, what would you get? Uh, it's funny you should say that. You asked me that last time, I think, and I'll probably have the same answer. Probably sorry recall. because I'm fat. I'm a fat mess. My bad. Schnitzel, schnitzel with some spetzle. Kaze mm-hmm. Spetzle or regular? K- Kaze. But yeah. I just. With Zwiebel and Speck order? No, we already asked. No, no onions for me. 
Jeez. But so there's a place, there's a brewery. So I'm about 15 minutes from Guelph, where I live now. So me and me and my girlfriend went to Susan went to a uh, a brewery. We've been there a couple times, and I got they have schnitzel with spetzle on it. I'm like, let's go. Like, and that bring to, you right back, geez. right? So I no, figured so out it how... was shit. It wasn't even close. Oh, schnitzel really? was good, but the spetzle was like tastes like mac and cheese. More really? Than anything, right. But so, so it wasn't, but that would be, I guess, that would be what I would eat. That's like trying to order a hamburger in Germany. They just, it's not the exactly, same. Exactly, yeah. It's or chicken right, wings, yeah. yeah. Um, they, they butchered chicken wings like nobody's business. Oh, they? terrible. Yeah. They had no idea what to do with the chicken wing. <laughs> um, it but, awful, though. But speaking of Spetsley, is like I uh, I make that here at home, and I, I can make it like it's supposed to be. Yeah. Like, I can do that. They have the thing that it's like a great cheese grater, it looks like, but then there's a little square thing on top. So you make your batter and I'm, if it's mac and cheese, they're missing the nutmeg. They need more nutmeg. So then you <laughs> just pour it in and then you slide it back and forth and it drops in the boiling water. And then yeah. those are your noodles. Then you fry them up with all the butter and whatever else fun you want in there. And it, and it really stuff. doesn't take that long. One, one is weevil. One is weevil. Oh. One is gas. One is weevil. <laughs> I'd uh. probably go with the uh, nice rinder roladen with brat kartoffel. Really? Brat yeah. kartoffel is like the, the home fries, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then the, what did you say? The roulade. Rinder roulade. That, isn't that the steak that's rolled up with something in it? Yeah, it has a pickle with mustard. And then you get horseradish, a little meridity on the side. See, I never got into that, but you're making me hungry right now. Yeah. I've grown up a bit now. Right. Now, well, I I don't know about pickles, but horseradish I can now handle. Oh, pickles, mustard, horseradish. That was the best over there. We're yeah. actually, we have a German exchange student living with us this year. You have hey, a house? German exchange student living yeah. in your house? My and old, you get, uh, And you guys used to bill it. WHL players, eh? You guys yeah. don't mind bringing people in. Oh, no. It's actually my old defense partner from Straubing, his daughter. Really? That's cool. Gordon Borberg. I don't know if you know the name. I don't. Yeah. I don't, but that's really cool that you're willing his, to do uh, that. Yeah. So we haven't gone to a German restaurant. That's on the docket here. The kids have already been back in school for two months over here, though. What? Yeah, well, they, they, they start in the end of July because it's 110 degrees, so you can't do anything outside. Oh, so you may as well learn. Might as well, yeah. <laughs> uh, do you guys know who Manfred the meat guy is in Beating Hunt? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, I remember Matt. The, he, was, uh, he was the guy, the butcher. Yeah, that. Why did... does that ring a bell for me? You would know him. He had like the, was it the guy? Did he have long hair? Well, I don't know about back when you were there, but for me, um, he had been Justin Kelly's jersey sponsor. And yeah. Justin, for some reason, kept us a secret. He kept us to himself that he would get to go there and get all this free meat. Well, Justin leaves <laughs> and goes to the DL or whatever. And then this guy sponsors my jersey. And I see him out at a restaurant one night. And he says to my buddy in Germany, he goes, what's this guy's deal? Like, I sponsor his jersey. He never comes by. He never whatever. I started hey, going. an insult. Yeah, right. well, I started going to his place, and, you know, he couldn't speak English. I wasn't that good at German. But then we ended up, like, going out on the town one night together. And this guy <laughs> gave me so much gosh darn meat. Um, I got so fat, they asked me to leave. Uh, but like the, he was incredible. I'd go there and he, he'd have me leave with this fillet of beef from Argentina. Um, he would, he was supplying the meat to grocery stores and, the, and then he would let me leave with a bag or two and man, it was incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Lucky that wasn't during the mad cow disease stuff. That's when I lived in England. <laughs> well, <laughs> Manfred, the meat guy, was he's a beauty. And uh, we had you'd recognize him, Teeps, if you saw him. Yeah, I'm sure I would. Yeah. Well, it's all the same care. I'm sure it's the same characters that were there when yeah. we were there, that when Wally was there. Well, Wally, I think you're friends with Marcus and Simone too, right? That's yeah. right. Yeah. We, we did get to know them there near the end of our beating time. Yeah. Yeah, he was a nice guy. 
He, he I actually the, I, he just won the, the championship for the gliding or something. Yeah, yeah. he's a big glide. He, he always offered to take me, but I never had the the, yeah. the snack well, to get. He in did. Well, well, I did. did. I did. Yeah, I guess we've oh, talked about you? that then. So yeah, when we we did it as a team day, and um, I'll yeah, we were doing the glider things, and he was telling me how it all works, and like he's saying, you got to catch currents, and they can fly really really far if they catch these currents at the right time or whatever. But then we're on an actual propellered plane and we went up into the air and he just shut the plane off in the, like in the air, he shuts it off. And then we're sitting there and I'm like, so like he pulled out. So he, I'm like, okay, whatever. And then he pulls out a checklist. It was like a checklist of 20 things to do to start your plane. And we're literally in the air with the plane shut off and he pulls out his checklist. And I'm like, you need a goddamn checklist and this thing shut off, <laughs> like just turn it on and let's keep flying. Um, but yeah, no, yeah, they are great people. We went over there for a few dinners and uh, yeah. yeah. And those are the people that can make a town feel like home, right? When you can actually hit it off with people that like you like outside of just your teammates. Right. Well, I you told were... you. Go ahead teams. No, I was going to say, I mentioned last part too, but like the, my oldest daughter, Cassidy, she was three years old. We shoved her into the German kindergarten at the end of the street. And to this day, Frau Stamm, her kindergarten teacher, sends her a Christmas card and a birthday card. And she's really? 27 years, she's 27 years old. And this was her kindergarten teacher? Yep. To this day, she gets a Christmas card and a birthday card. That's insane. 20, that is insane because if that 24 person... 24 years later if that person would have been teaching all these other classes for t- however long out, she, she can't be doing that for everybody. Can she? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't ask. I don't, that, that you know, wild. She, she'll message me on Facebook the odd time and ask how I'm doing. And I still call her Frau Stam. Like just, <laughs> she's an old lady now. Right. Right. But um, yeah. Just the, but to your point about just certain people in the community that make you feel like you're at home. Well, and that's like, what you feel comfortable if, and... if people are listening for us old hockey guys. Right. And it's like, um, I know there's people that listen in Herning, Denmark and other places in Germany and the UK. It's like, if you can help guys feel comfortable and at home at a place, they actually play better. If they like being there and they like the people there, they play hockey better. Yep. Don't they? You bet you. It makes their experience a lot better too. It does. And learning the language too, right? I know, Alfie, you can speak, eh? Du can speak ein bisschen Deutsch. The gods of pod machen, oder? Yeah. Teeps is fluent too. He had, his German was pretty darn good too, I remember. Ich kann immer noch ein bisschen sprechen. Oh, yeah. genau. Yeah, we can it's funny though. I, 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 like, you don't speak it, right? But no. it's in my, I can, I can still speak it. Like, it's weird because I don't speak it. I do but know what you mean. Shit. I don't know how it was for your kids, but when we moved to Ireland from Germany, within six months, they lost all of their German. They couldn't speak any. Like, they were fluent. They were going to uh, first grade. My daughter was in first grade, full German immersion. My son was yeah. kindergarten. Within six months in Ireland, they lost the entire language. So it's the same, and I, I, I never thought about it. But So Cassidy, my oldest, she was up till grade four, fourth grade. Wow. In Germany. In Germany. Yeah, so she was like a German kid. Like she'd throw the kartoffel roll in the R's and just like all that shit, right? Like, and then just probably walking to, around with a pretzel and no teeth. And yeah. then switched switched to from German to English, but speak like an actual German kid. But later on, like we we actually looked into getting her into German classes. So I don't know why, just kind of to keep it. And you couldn't find it in the Toronto area, like mm-hmm. nothing, right? So whatever. Well, as long as she, um, it's, I'm sure it would come back if she wanted it to. Hey, we're back, and we we're talking about your daughter, um, and le- losing. Oh it. yeah, no, she she just lost her German when we came back to Canada after I retired from playing. Yeah, yeah, it goes quick, which is weird because they, it's the exact, it's the polar opposite. So as a kid. Like, Alfie, you experienced it. I don't know how old your kids, Wally, when you were still playing, how old they got or speaking German or anything. They didn't. But they pick it up like nothing, right? Like, it's like they just learn it. They're sponges. But they don't, so they, we're, don't we're, think, they don't think, like, okay, it's this in English no, now. You're it's right. This but, in that's, but that's my point, Alfie. So, 
they don't think they just learn and they just speak it. We we judge ourselves trying to speak it, right? Yeah. Yeah. We remember we remember it. We can speak it now. And the sponges can't remember fuck all. <laughs> right. Because like it's the opposite. It was just part of it. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I, I I can have a full on German conversation with one of my old friends in Germany, but yeah. the kids they don't. I was like, let's speak German. Like I can't. I literally can't. Speak it was German. harder for us. To, it was harder for us to learn it. Yeah. Because we think harder. too much. How? Where do you put the verb? Where do you put the noun? Like all that shit. Yeah. Yeah. It is crazy how fast they can learn, though. I remember playing with Sebastian Charpentier, the goalie we had in Beatingheim, and um, his kids came over, and they were French. They could speak us some English, and then they came over and were doing better in German within six months than I had been doing in three years, and it was so embarrassing. <laughs> well, uh, there's Canadians that I played with. They were there for 10 years, and they couldn't hold one conversation. No. <laughs> You got to put an effort in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like you're living there, right? <laughs> it does make life better when you can get by and do things, right? And talk depends, to people. Depends what you want. Darren Ritchie, that guy, he lived in his little shire and he was Probably. happy. <laughs> he didn't leave that place. He wouldn't even leave the place to go watch a T-Hip concert with Teeps and I. That's how dedicated <laughs> he was to his craft. Um, it had nothing to do with his craft. <laughs> no <laughs> that was uh one story that came up i it was teeps told that story of the tragically hip concert eh? i tell this story to this day oh that's one of the best stories ever though it's just day. on a limb like i'll, I'll drive teeps you drink because he liked the bites and a little bit more and we got there and it was what like 150 people maybe in this oh, it was water. like an industrial area we didn't we didn't even think we we're in the right spot no we were there like where the then we went up to that little kiosk remember and were yeah. they already like a big, they were already a big band at that point oh, oh yeah. in Canada, they were huge. this was this Iconic. was the peak this was their peak this was their peak and there's 150 food. people you but guys had said i don't even think it was that big Alfie. not even close to that big no it was like a little bar yeah or a makeshift oh, bar. Oh, off the post and in. Oh, thanks, buddy. I'm fucking watching it right now. <laughs> now you know he makes it. <laughs> <laughs> Sucker. But I don't know. Like, how did we get tickets? Because the internet wasn't around. Like, did we call and get no, tickets? You, or... you, you, you said I can get tickets. So it was me, you, and Rich. Yeah. And then you said I'll fucking drive deep, so we'll get a case of bill. You can whatever. And then Rich was supposed to come. He's like, oh no, I don't think so. And he was like the big music guy too. Yeah, Uve, Uve was there though with us, wasn't he? No, it was just me and you, bud. Was it? Oh, did Uve come? He did. He was there. Was he? He remembers it too. Well, oh. it sounded like a heck of a night. You guys, folks, would have to listen to the other episode, but you guys ended up at a tragically hip yeah. concert with like and and backstage to me and backstage. Is- yeah, some wheel and a deal of- <laughs> in Germany. <laughs> in Germany. <laughs> 20 bucks or 20 20 points <laughs> marks or euros, whatever it was got us full no, his, buddy, his buddy didn't have any more money for beer <laughs> so did you guys play there when there was deutsch marks i did yeah. yeah yeah i switched over i got a raise my first the exchange year, yeah my first year i remember i was in bad idling and me and this german goalie i lived with we went we were going down to austria we had to go to the bank and get Italian lira and Austrian, I don't even know what their kroner or whatever it was, because you had to pay tolls in Italy. They didn't have bank cards or ATM stuff. So we had to have like four different currencies just to go down to Kitzbühel for New Year's Eve. And then at the you know New Year's Eve, then it switched over to the euro the next day. <laughs> so we then yeah, had the we boys. Had... So I go ahead, though. No, I was like, no, then I'm we had to I, with euros, and yeah, everyone got a raise. But I remember the boys, like, in the room the day it changed over, they're like, got the exchange rate that I did. Am I making more now? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> <laughs> really? And I remember in Deutschmarks, my, when I went to Dusseldorf, the year I played in the DEL, it was still Deutschmarks. Yeah. So even I so I thought it was the coolest thing. It was like 175,000 Deutschmarks or whatever. So it was like, yeah. it looked like it was like, <laughs> like a lot of money, but it was like because it had the uh, 
Oh, uh, I did. I still think my favorite year was the year when I left Germany. The exchange rate was like one one ten, and then and when we got back, it was one sixty to the yeah, US. You can, go you can go one way or the other. So, what well, it's, it's yeah, I, I mean, it was I, like a fifty. It can change how much you make in a season drastically when you're talking about bringing stuff home. It's I went yeah. to Germany and that year we won it all and we had good bonuses. The exchange rate at one point got over one point eight to the Canadian. Yeah, and that was, um, that was probably the same time that it was one six. And then within three, four years later, when Beatingham's sucking, I'm making about the same money, a little bit I about the same. But the exchange rate's one point two eight, and you're like, so I'm making fifty cents less on everything. Yeah. I had I had guys though, like and I was never one of these guys. But I had guys that would follow the exchange rate. More of that year I played in the DEL, those guys were making some decent coin. And every time the exchange rate would go up, they'd put it in their American bank account. Yeah. They'd wait, and then it would go up, put it in their American bank. Like so they'd get the exchange rate when it was high. Knowing it was going to go low again, but I, I yeah. But how do you know? Up, like sometimes it doesn't go back up. Sometimes it doesn't go back down. It's like how do you know? These guys, it's... these guys had people, Wally. I don't. Yeah, know. people. They had people. They're the I people that was my. Yeah, I got you. I don't. I didn't never had those people. I was just saying. Can I just uh, intervene for one second? <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's going into overtime, Alfie. Don't be hitting off the post and then okay. put a minute behind. Well, I, I, the game just ended. <laughs> Buffalo ran the kickback. Yeah, I got into regulation. I just saw that coin flip. <laughs> um, okay. Do you guys remember where your favorite restaurant would be in Beatingheim? Uh, Bird Did you guys Hall. have a honey hole? With the bird Dan, Hall? Dan, Danny's, Danny's <laughs> Bar and Grill. When I right. Oh, that's what you said. And what did you say, Elfie? Berghoff. It was Berg. a nice German restaurant. You remember that place? They had the... They would yeah, have yeah, they were good. Snobs. Was good, yeah. Like we yeah. would go there for lunch. You wouldn't go, but I would go with all the German kids to that Berghof yeah. place, and it was so good. And then also, do you remember the lady Renate with the Rode yeah. brothers? So yeah. there was this one lady in Beatingheim that two guys, the two Rode brothers, Christian and Marcus, lived at her place. She would cook lunch for the players. There would be like five or six of us every day that would go to her house, and it was like full on spread of german food it was so good and she would charge us like three euros for the meal her name's renata renata Renata. i totally have heard that name and it rings a bell and i just can't right now put a picture or a face to that name but the berg the berghoff was my favorite restaurant there the berghoff i'm trying to remember which if that was still around but rossneck right downtown was yeah. a brewery and had all the German food that was right up my wheelhouse too. Well, I know that the Fußgänger Zone in Beatingheim changed a lot from when we were there to when you were there. They really oh, is that in, right? Yeah, like there wasn't really a whole lot there, but and then I remember by the time I came back a couple of years later, it was uh, quite a bit different. They developed yeah. it a lot. Uh, the main yeah. part was that ice cream shop right by the Kaufland, kind of in that little circle down there. Mm-hmm. And there yeah. wasn't a whole lot for restaurants downtown. They were kind of spread out a little bit. Is that right, eh? Yeah. Um Coughland that played the grocery store there. That was that place with the schnitzels and the half chickens you could buy on your way to the grocery store. That was a great spot. I don't oh, know if you had those. The half chicken. The half chickens were so money over there. Yeah, with the sweet chili sauce and then and then oh, yeah. 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 They know yeah, how to yeah. rotisserie a chicken, don't they? <laughs> Yeah, that would be a solid uh, Cabina Fest when someone would bring their chicken truck. That happened yeah. before. I I was part of that too. Yeah, it's yeah. exciting times. <laughs> um, well, while he's still grabbing a beer, you know who else you played with that's driving, which I have no idea if I asked you about before. Derek Hahn from Elmira, Ontario. Honor, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I actually talked to him maybe six to eight months ago. I think he was on your pod. I just reached out to him and yeah reconnected quickly with him and yeah i haven't talked to him since he was on but um i couldn't believe he was from elmira ontario because he was from right around the corner and he sounded like he's from texas i couldn't understand him he sounded like he had been living in texas his whole life 
and he was from Elmira, Ontario, and he played on the Sugar Kings with Brandon Dietrich. He had that twang in Straubing because his wife, uh, I can't remember her name, but she's from Texas. He played in Texas, so he was kind of set up there, and he's mm-hmm. always, he had that Texas twang as long as I knew him. And that's wild to think he's from the same town as me, and he's yeah. talking like that and living in Texas. Um, but, he, yeah, he's he been well there. there though. Yeah, he's been there a long time. Um, selling, selling trucks at Toyota or something. Yeah. Okay. Teeps, favorite barn you ever played in? Oof. I'm almost done. I know it's Monday and we got to go to bed soon. It's got to be Vice Vosser or Krimichar without the walls. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, when we spoke no, of Vice Vosser, I got to bring hey. that place up, though, is – that outdoor rink that was there when they were playing the 52 games against Berlin, that yeah. was like as cool as a rink gets. I don't know if you guys That's saw the one it. with the grassy knoll. Yeah. 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 Grassy knoll. Yeah. No, I'd say Dusseldorf when the, it was the old barn in Dusseldorf on Bremstrasse. And I think it was like 11,000 it would fit. And it was, wow. Like I said, we weren't the greatest team, but it was rocking. Like it was just typical. So that I one, you said, "Wow, I don't be. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're watching the game again, the football. So, um, there was eleven thousand people at the old barn in Dusseldorf. I I only practice at that old barn. Five or eleven thousand. But it was jammed, like it was, and they were crazy, like it was, it was good I, atmosphere. And then we, and then Cologne opened up their arena that same year. The year I was there, that was the first year of the Cologne Arena, that was with, which was the first, first NHL style arena in Germany that year. Um, and that was like eight thousand five rival, right? So they were they were good games, fun games to play in. But probably Bremstrasse would be my craziest arena. Okay, and how about you, Alfie? Uh, I think Straubing in the playoffs was. I'm pretty partial to that place, but it it was crazy in the playoffs. Uh, they, yeah, they, they were, you know the, the five thousand people, and there would be seven thousand people, and they're standing eight deep. And I remember the the finals the year we won it, just how crazy that place was. And then the first game in the DEL, that was it was sold out, loud. Yeah, well, you know how crazy though. Like Deep said, they're fanatical, and well, it's I. When we won in Beatingheim, to think of if we would have gone up to the second or the DL like we were supposed to, that first game would have been electric in that little barn in Beatingheim that we were actually in the DL as the little town. That yeah. would have been exciting, but it never did happen. Did you play in the new barn, Wally? No, I. Uh, have you guys been to? I had, it? I had, well, I had just switched to the Hellbronner Falcons. I actually played in the first game ever played at that new arena. And I was playing for a different team. It was my first year away. It was a very was strange nice, feeling. Nice arena? Um, I can't yeah. tell from pictures. I don't know. I mean, it, it is, it's too much ice though. Like their last rink, I don't think it was Olympic size. The, the, that little one, I don't think that was no. Olympic size, but this new one sure is. Um, it seemed like a lot of ice when I had to get around out there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but no, it's a nice arena. I never saw their locker room or anything like that. Um, I mean, I was on a different team then, so um, yeah, it's weird when I think of beating him. I think of the old rink. I'm sure you guys do too. Oh, yeah, no. yeah. Um, and, well, I don't know what else I got. I got a bunch of notes down, but we've been talking a while, and it is Monday night, eh? <laughs> Almost yeah. two hours. Eh? It's yes. for you guys. Well, and why you look like you've been laying in Elfie. bed all night, Elfie. You're the one in bed. Yeah, you look like you're half asleep. No, I'm the old guy. I'm tired. <laughs> Got an early morning. Takes, you must get tired saving lives. I'm not going to lie. Mark, yeah. It's hard. It's Those hips so and hard. knees, man. <laughs> um, I, just keep the tru- I just keep the truckers rolling. Yeah, yeah. Keep, well, keep- Teams, we're going to, now that we know each other, we're going to have to stay in touch because um, I do have to go through Orangeville to make it to the city, right? And uh, yeah, I'm in Rock. I'm in Rockwood now, though, but close enough. Rockwood. 
Yeah, I've lived in Rockwood the last couple of years. Okay, Rockwood. I'm trying to think of where that is. That's by Orangeville. Uh, no, I'm about 15 minutes from Guelph, 20 okay. minutes from Georgetown. I should know all that because that's around where I'm from. <laughs> How far from Toronto are you? You know, in Georgetown, when you're in Georgetown, me, yeah. uh, no traffic, 45 minutes. Oh, okay. With traffic, like that's where one of my warehouses are. With traffic, hour and a half. But I was born. I, I was. I was born in Georgetown, and then played Triple A golf. So I should have a pretty good idea where you're at. <laughs> yeah, in the vicinity. Yeah, you're. You're. Uh, you're just outside the big smoke. You're just outside the big city, and it's all coming your way. <laughs> yeah. You got to drive out of the big smoke every day. Oh, uh, is that right? Eh? There's yeah. There's a lot of people around there. I like it out here without all the people, you know, but yeah, Al- Alfie, know. where are you? What, where are you living? Chandler. It's in, it's a suburb of Phoenix, a suburb of Phoenix. How far yeah. outside? No, you can't tell when it's just one big massive city. Right. Like, it's all Phoenix. I, it's just, it's just on the outside. 20 minutes to the baseball stadium, downtown. 30 minutes to that TPC where they have the golf tournament. Uh, How part of the college arena where the Coyotes play? Uh, 20 minutes. That's right by the airport and by ASU. 20, I went to a couple of games there. It's pretty pretty awesome seeing guys that close up. It's embarrassing. Yeah, I guess from that. It's an embarrassment for the NHL. Yeah, but for me to watch again, I went and yeah, no, I get that. It's like, it like watching them in, in Beatingheim's little rink. And yeah, that's way exactly. a way better pl- way to watch hockey for sure. Yeah. yeah uh, have I ever asked hockey. how you ended up in Arizona? My wife's uh, she was born and raised here. We met in college, and she didn't she wasn't too keen on moving to Lethbridge, Alberta. Right, and yeah, so she went to Colorado College from Arizona. Yep, her brother went there, and so she was kind of legacy and went there too. I got gotcha. you. We met in school and well, I think we're know. I think we're getting into the after hours portion, aren't we? <laughs> probably. We should probably just shut it down. I don't know if anybody cares about this stuff now. <laughs> uh, I don't know. uh well, thanks guys for making the time and we may as well shut it down, eh? Because uh, you know, it's time to move on. It's Monday night. Well, Wally's had enough beers, it's time to shut her down. <laughs> well, it's been I fun. Know. I mean, I don't, what else do, do you guys got anything else? No, I'm good, Wally. I'm good. It's 1130. Right? Me too. <laughs> it's late. <laughs> and this has been another episode of Two Ales and Hockey Tales with Alfie and Teeps and Wally.